Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got game number one of our next series now going to be coming at you here. This is, again, the bottom portion uh, of the brackets here for the DreamHack qualifiers. Refreshing the brackets real quickly. Give you guys a visual of what we're looking at. So there you are. Um, again, DSPN defeating Bad Monkey Gaming. And so they're in the semifinals. Fresh then defeating Nullstone. Both of those being 2-0. Uh, so our top semifinals is set. Now we need to figure out the bottom semifinals. And those are the two matchups there. Sync Esports versus the Solaire Club. And then the one that we're covering, Reason Gaming versus Team Who. So that's, uh, that's what they're playing for. And this will be the last series of the day here. But obviously still plenty of fun to be coming at you. And again, getting a kicked off here with game number one. Uh, once again, joined, joined by my co-casters, Nui here. And uh, we are already developing into the draft. But uh, Reason versus... Uh, Team Who, now, a couple of notes to make. Again, Reason Gaming, we talked about this when we casted them on the Thursday uh, against Sync Esports where they lost that Series 3-0. Uh, Boya Kuya, Boya Kuya, uh, that is uh, Imba Boy, something like that. Uh, that. That is Imba Boy, just name change. And then Matt H has owned me, so worth noting there. And then it goes Team Who, again, a couple of players that you might recognize as far as names go. We've been learning a little bit more about them as of late. So, but Snowy, welcome back. Thank you. Um, yeah, interesting game coming up. Um, I got some experience playing with both teams. I've been ringing and screaming a lot with Reason lately. And during Season 3, I played with Team Move for uh, a period of time under the name of uh, Prime Eagers. They swapped up two players since then, but I still know like their strategies a little bit and what they like to do. So uh, hopefully I can bring a lot of insight on just when it comes to the draft and so on. And I also spoke with Imboboy earlier today, and we were talking a little bit about the recent games versus Sync Esports earlier this week when they... <clears throat> Yeah, they got destroyed more or less, or I mean, it was some close games, but I mean, in the end, they lost 0-3 to sync, and we felt like, you know, maybe try to go for a little bit more straightforward the drafts instead of, you know, trying to complicate it. Sometimes you have a tendency to do so as a drafter when, you know, it's not going as well when you're playing a tough team as sync, you know, you're, you're thinking, overthinking too much. So I love the way that they are addressing the problem here, or just running the Magnus Engineer, like dual lane in the mid, for example, that's not something that we usually see Reason do. So I love it. And I get Tula fan to counter the Parasite right away. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure what else to say. I mean, I like it so far. Yeah, definitely a uh, very smart draft here. Amber Boy again, the captain. Now, Buya Kuya here for Reason Gaming. So Jim Carreyu, always a fan of that name, uh, the captain for Team Who over here on the other side. And, we're finishing up the bands. One more band going on either side. The initial bands, by the way, were Midas, Ophelia, Dr. Repulsor, and Rhapsody. And then, of course, we're looking at the bands here now. Puppet Master, Prisoner, Clanks, Pebbles. And you would think uh, with the Puppet and Clanks, probably going to be one more carry here. Band out from Team Who. Oh, they go the Valkyrie route. Uh, again, we have seen him before play that, so... All right, so we got the Magmus and Engineer most likely in that mid lane. You don't want Engineer as a roamer simply because, you know, you can't outbox a uh, solo hero with that low range of yours. So usually you want to sit in the mid with Engineer, and I would assume that Magmus is going to follow him on that. So Legion team, they can't really, you know, they can't really deal with that. They have the Glacius who is far, or far weaker than the Engineer during the laning phase. So most likely it's just going to be Glacius sitting um, down at the safe lane with a hard carry of their choice. Not sure what that might be yet. But uh, might be a Katolfan suicide as well, because even if Katolfan is very good versus Parasite in the early levels, because you can eat his creep, Parasite has a tendency to run defensively nowadays rather than offensively, which we used to see back in like season two, and therefore Katolfan can't really chase him as much as he could before. So Katolfan more like it's more when he picks up the pull key that he really starts countering Parasite. So I would assume that it's going to be a relatively passive game, and then kind of transitions into the mid game when we see those pull key timings popping up. Then that's when action is going to start happening. Yeah. Yeah, look at Team Who, you know, finishing off with uh, more obvious pickups in essence. The, the bubbles into then a Swift Blade. The fact that Swift Blade's even left open that long, honestly a little crazy. But uh, they do get Swift Blade with the final pick here. So things kind of shaping up. But it looks like more of the, the carry Swift Blade, not necessarily Suicide, of course. Uh, leave that to Warbeast most likely. But – it is interesting also having, having bubbles on top of that, to be fair. You know, you figure if Warbeast is going to be suicide. So that, I want to, no, it can't, obviously, Parasite will be jungle. So I guess, yeah, Warbeast suicide, bubbles mid, and then Swiftblade Glacius bottom is what. Looks uh, like it. 
we'll see I here. feel like uh, you could have gone for a little bit more of a greedy support if you're running this defensive kind of style. Um, sure, you might be afraid of Magnus and Engineer manning up, but even if they were to do so, I mean, Glacius is not really the best here to deal with it, so maybe a little bit more of a greedy support if they're trying to go this defensive style. Um, bubbles on top of that, I mean, I know Slasky Jared plays out mean bubbles, like one of the best out there, and I would honestly say that Slasky Jared is probably the competitive player that's most underestimated right now. He's really good. He's up there with Own Me and Mike when it comes to competing in those initiation roles. We have seen him do some mean hooks as well on a prisoner, for example. But I can tell you, this guy can play a lot of different heroes and he usually tends to come out on top in his one versus one matchups. This time, however, he's up versus a Magnus and Engineer. And Magnus is so good for the bubbles because you can't take cover that son of his. It would have been one thing if he was up versus a, um, a prisoner, for example, or a Hammerstorm or something like that, which have a visual and a cast time. But Magnus, he stuns right away. And then we've got Engineer, who's one of the more heavy damage dealers in the early game. So I don't, I don't know if bubbles is actually going to be able to take that head on. Oh. They were right clicking that wild soul for the longest time, and I'm like, are we really <laughs> going to see a wild soul here? But no, they, they changed it up at the last second. They, they go the madman, actually. And that's, you know, not your... Now, Imba Boy readies up on Hag. That, you know, we have not seen this in a long time, man. A carry wretched Hag is what's coming out here yeah. for Reason Gaming. This is actually what we saw. The last DreamHack winter 2013 the qualifiers for that when reason qualified then their core hero was wretched hag so i know for a fact that they can play this hero real damn well however the meta has transitioned quite a bit since then and in the new kind of sense where parasite picks up the lex taliones you have the swift blade and the bubbles i don't know if i like it i feel like it's a little bit too squishy i hope that control fan goes for the mid a little bit more tanky build that i was talking about earlier today as well instead of that portal key route because otherwise i feel like they're going to be in deep trouble when the legion team gets their core items there is not going to have anyone in front because virtual hags sure as hell can't take a lot of damage early on so yeah you see how it evolves but Yes, Madman is uh, up versus the Glacius. Actually, Glacius is one of the supports also that you want to draft when you're up versus a Madman simply because of that freeze of his. You can lock down the Madman for quite some time, and he's relatively squishy, but you know what? It actually seems like this is an offensive try lane. Yeah, they are setting up for that. So it's interesting sitting there, there the Magmus Engineer. You know, when you think Magmus Engineer, for so long we, we were so used to seeing it in the middle. Uh, when the meta was where it was at, that was more so Haunter Season 2. We saw plenty of that. So it is interesting going to be seeing it here, definitely, in more of the aggressive pseudo trial lane is what it's shaping up to be. But you got to wonder now, as Team Who, how they're going to react to this, how they're going to pick up on this even, as far as, uh, as, far as that's concerned. We'll see. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I feel like Parasite can easily transition to the Hellborn Forest if he wants to and just keep farming over there and just let Cthulhu do his thing. They're not really going to be able to kill the Swift Blade. Uh, possibly. I mean, Magmus Engineer and Cthulhu Fund, yeah, they do a lot of damage, but you need to be head on or, I mean, uh, spot on with that Lava Search in that case because the Swift Spin lasts for quite some time and it's not the kind of hero that you want to tower dive. And on top of that, I mean, I was talking about as well that Ma Bubbles is really weak versus, you know, a Magmus in the mid lane. So I'm surprised that they choose not to go for that. Magnus Engineer to shut down the bubbles. Now instead it's going to be bubbles versus Madman in the mid, and I would favor the bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. So we'll see how Reason Gaming, how this does work out for them in the long run, but I I'm still very intrigued by the Embo Boy Wretched Hag carry. And again, the idea of seeing a Grim War on a Wretched Hag, it's been so long, but you would think in this case, it's very, very possible. <laughs> we'll be seeing that again coming out here. Madman off the bat, he actually even takes a tower hit right there, going a little bit too far. Trying to pressure bubbles, but in the end, going to be fine, of course. Uh, bottom lane, Glacius. You do see the aggressive wharf behind the tower, giving information as to where Glacius may be and trying to sneak and wrap around here. But, yeah, if he's able to get a freeze off and then a spin for Swift Blade, of course, could result in some deadly uh, deadly situations. But Cthulhu fine. He thinks he's being a little sneaky. Not so much. He's pretty much on top of that <laughs> ward of sight uh, from the Forgotten. So, going to be easily spotted here. And yeah, they have yeah. that vision to work with, so. That's the risk of it, of running the pseudo tri lane. I mean, Kitolfant, I mean, you're kind of dependent on actually shutting down the Parasite, because even if you farm equally good as the Parasite, the Parasite is still going to come out ahead, um, simply because he's more useful when it comes to ganking. As soon as he hits the level 6 mark, he got the face hug, and you can't really escape that. Kitolfant's stun is way more unreliable, so they really need the pseudo tri lane to succeed down here. 
We're getting the teacher finished on War Beast again. You got to keep in mind the the battle cry going to be used here frequently throughout the laning phase. So <clears throat> apparently, NG Magnus only results in a 50 50 win percentage. There's the freeze to stun him as Swiftly, though, first before he can get the spin off and eventually gets him to fall back. But I almost still think that's a victory there for <laughs> the Glacier Sun, but they get them to use both the keg as well as the Lava Surge. And now actually Walden are coming in. Slow comes out, and now Swiftblade still has a spin to use at a more potent time, and this should be a kill as it will be. The keg's going to try to maybe get away at the last second. Not in time, though. So Qzane here playing the Parasite actually gets good up for the kill. They're trying to turn on a Glacius, but again, you got to be careful with those glowing red hands especially and how much uh, auto attack damage they're going to be doing to you in return. So... Yeah, the aggressive pseudo trial lane, not, uh, not necessarily working out as planned here for Reason Gaming. And uh, giving you credit, Zui, you, you kind of called that. It's, wasn't expecting it to be the prettiest. Actually, no, I'm, I'm very surprised that they're going for it. I don't see why they would want to do it. I mean, Gitulovan is not the kind of hero that can chase down a Parasite on his own. He needs a support that assists him in that, if that's the case. And he got an Engineer. And he can't really do too much versus a Glacius 1 versus 1 because he doesn't have a range to support it. Yeah. And on the top of that, Madman is... Yeah, okay, it's actually quite even in the mid. <laughs> See right there, Zane's pressure him. Quite a bit, get the bottle delivered. But yeah, very even creep right now. Bottom lane, Glacius. He freezes the correct one right there. Well played, that's not easy to do. Especially when you're under distress. And actually, Swift play the spin is going to be enough to take out Cthulhu Fawn. So tank effect goes down. And yeah, again, it's really safe to say. This Cito trial and not really gum coming to, to fruition here. For a reason, gaming has now backfired twice here, trying to set up some kills. I wonder if Cthulhu Fawn's just going to go into his jungle now. Yeah, it looks like he's like, screw it. <laughs> I just want to get some farm in my own jungle, and now Parasite's going to be able to freely farm in his own jungle himself. So they are kind of kind of going away from it now, but now you're in a spot of, I mean, should NG stay here, or should he actually maybe go to the middle lane? Or or something. I don't know. I mean, he can't really do anything in the mid. That's the thing. I mean, he's versus a bubbles. We can take cover. So without that lava search or like that solid stun in before, he's not going to be able to do anything versus the bubbles. Um, therefore, I feel like he he doesn't have any choice. He can't go top either because Virtue Hag. I mean, same thing with her. He, he's not going to be able to hit her stun with the Virtue Hag on the lane. So he, he has to stay down here with Magnus. I mean, recent kind of trapped himself in a corner. Got to Wretched Hag at the top lane, pressuring Warby's quite a bit, but in the end, going to be fine. But how about that? Zane coming through big time. I didn't catch it, unfortunately. But I will say, I've been, every now and then, I've been going back to this middle lane, and Zane seems like he's just constantly putting pressure on a Bubbles. And he's able to get him pretty much, yeah, where he died was to the left of his own tower right there. Yeah. So well um, played by Madman. He was doing a really sneaky play. He was running in with, uh, he was at the top rune or something, or at the top hill. He was running in with stalk and just getting a barrel roll on a very low uh, bubbles, securing the kill. Well, sneaky play indeed, and that's kind of how Madman works, though, so from time to time. So well played. You see Swift play. The tower is going to kind of get pushed in here, definitely helping him get the creep farm. And he's already looking at close to 300 gold per minute, being a 101 help sure. And, you see Magmus and Engineer Engineer roaming around with the invis room, but they couldn't find an opening. As Glacius gets back before, uh, they were able to do too much. Parasite's coming down, though, once again. Oh, look at the top lane. Telephone's going for a kill on the Warbeast. I think it's going to be a six. Oh, wait. How much yeah. is low, though? No, yeah, he is low, but he's going to run in. Yeah, there we go with the Sonar Scream, and he's going to be far enough, but oh, here come the Hellhounds. Uh-oh. Warbeast in trouble. Warbeast himself is going to survive. That should be a kill, right? One, a couple of auto attacks should do it. One, oh, oh, the he... crit as well. Oh, my God. Is it going to be enough? No, he goes the wrong direction. <laughs> oh, he's still not out of the woods just yet, literally. I but I think he's good. Okay, yeah. He has a blank. God, that was close. But in the end, he survives. Or Warbeast also will have to go to back to base. So he's uh, going to have to regen here. But very close call. And the boy, though, manages to get away. Now back to the bottom of this middle in action. Both are going to be fine, but clear. Two level advantage now as well for Zane. Man, he is not often we see him in the middle lane because he's usually the suicide, but he is having a very impressive performance and really showing us that when it comes to a 1v1 matchup, he knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah, this guy this guy is a beast. I, I hardly see him fail ever. Like, he just, he just does what he should at all times. Like, he performs. You know for a fact that he's not going to tilt. He just does his thing, and he does it well. Yeah, Bubbles here. He's about just above half-life. Again, knows that 
what happened earlier especially needs to be extra careful warby's at the top lane using using those hellhounds very aggressively every time i look up here i feel like they're they're on wretched hack doing some good damage and keeping her occupied and that, that's why she was so low earlier so some good pressure being put out he has 18 and one creep farm not too bad uh, but Haggy is definitely winning in 26 and 4. And Engineer is all the way up here. He doesn't have anywhere else to go. He can't yeah. be bottom anymore because Swiftly has reached that Ghost Marchers plus level 7 mark. So, I mean, there's no way he can be down there. Um, I want to point out one thing as well with the mid matchup the Bubbles versus uh, the Madman. You can out or keybind your out to take cover. Uh, so that you can just press one button and then have the outside cover on every single time. Oh, actually, yeah. Madman is going to come in. Or I have bubbles. Magmus is trying to flank, but the kelp field on him now. And actually, he's in a bad spot what? right here. He's going to try to get what? away. No. Oh, my God. That man at battery. Just enough. Yeah, that was a very awkward situation to be in. Hellhounds. Oh, oh, my gosh. They ran right past him. That would have been oh, epic. It's getting him. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been epic, but... Magmus, so uh, yeah, that was clearly you know a team call right there that almost backfired big time, but in the end he's fine. But again, Swiftplay now he's just free farm of the bottom lane because of that. Uh, Jim Carrey, you is having a pretty good time. We have an exchange though at the top rune area. Wretched Hag is going to be picked off. Face I got to through the bottom in the meantime. A couple of bottom attacks later, he goes down. Bubbles is barely alive. Can Madman finish him off? Stock in one second. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Apparently. Oh my God, he got the kill. He does fall in the end, but at least he took out near with him. And now Madman, he's not in the friendliest of spots. Dust comes out even with the stock. He still he could be in a lot mana. of trouble. I uh -oh. think he's going to be fine. I is don't know. He though? Oh, man. He uh, Swift the mana. Is no, there was the mana, know. but no. Swift slashes. Comes out and gets the kill. Wow. I mean, that went well in favor of Team Who right there. Oh, yeah. They're playing really well. They're, like, predicting recent gaming and how they are uh, moving right now. Very, very well played. Uh, Warbiz is 2-0 and 1 now as well, looking really good. 250 GPM, and we know for a fact that this guy, when he gets some items, he is going to start hitting hard, especially on this Hellborn team, who doesn't really have that much tanky presence. It is the Catolophan, but his farm is, it is far beyond average. It's 160 GPM. He's suffering big time. Yeah. <laughs> Today is just one of those weird days, man. Apparently, Solaire Club is up 11 to 3 in kills against Sync Esports 10 minutes in. What? I mean, again, without watching and everything, it's hard to say exactly what's been going on there, but definitely going to keep a close eye on that one. And, and here we are this game. I think it's safe to say Reason Gaming would be the favorites. And, and so far, down early on. Again, it's still early on not to get too ahead of things, but it's uh, <laughs> we already had the crazy one with Team Just Band 2 0 over BMG. No stunning fresh, oh. I think, is more so either way, but crazy stuff there. Oh, though. wow. Solar Club bringing it, yeah. for sure. Solar Club, a solid team, man. Definitely. Yeah, they've been around for a long fire. time. And, I mean, ah. they haven't necessarily had, you know, the top scores, but, I mean, they are a solid team, and they've made some roster changes now as well in before the offseason and this Dreamhack qualifiers. So, I mean, yeah, obviously it's working out very well for them. As Magmus goes down at the bottom lane. You see Swift Blade and Parasite coming together. We've seen several impressive Parasite performances today. Another one here uh, from Q Zane. Top one in the meantime. Warby's chasing down Engineer and Ulti form. It looks like he should be able to get away. In fact, Warby's going to be turned on. The Bat Blast came out all of a sudden. He was not expecting that. He ends up going down to the burst damage. Freeze on a Wretched Egg. They do take out Engineer now. Wretched Egg going to try to blink away. Zane is here on Madman, though. He's going to look to try to clean up a double damage room. Will definitely help with that. And he gets the one kill. That should be it as the Leech comes out. And it will slow him down. So with Zane coming in at least uh, to help clean up right there, not that, that was bad. Way too greedy. Like Warby standing or manning up versus an engineer versus both Wretched Hag and NG. Like mm -hmm. for what reason? I mean, sure. I mean the backup was coming, but that was still very, very greedy. And they're gonna lose two hero kills. And I mean, if you give a like a, an experienced game like recent gaming this kind of opportunities, I mean, it's gonna backfire big time because they know what they're doing. I mean, sure they had an unsuccessful laning phase, but they're still in this. I mean, it's still early on into the game. The game is far from over, and you can't be making those kind of mistakes. Yeah. Double stack, ain't no triple stack, ancients here on the Legion side. So I wonder if Team Who's gonna try to look to do that here in the near future. Mamet middle lane, he might be in some trouble. Parasite coming in, Kalachis here as well. There's the slow. He's going to be too far, though. Zane reacting preemptively and 
able to make the getaway beforehand. He's he's got steam boots. He has the ring of the teacher here. Um, Zane clearly again. He's he's doing very well. But Immo Boy still managing actually pretty well. Demo. So I was honestly expecting Zane to be top GPM, but. Uh, Emma Boy on Wretched Hack, 210 gold per minute about. Uh, do you see, I mean, could there possibly be something else other than a Grimoire first here on Wretched Hag, or are you expecting that being the carry hack here? Seeing as he already picked up that robe of his, I would assume that it's going to be that. But uh, I think it's, it depends on the progress of the game as well, if how much pressure the Legion team is going to put, or if they're going to be playing defensively. Right now, I don't see too much of an opportunity for the Legion team to actually initiate or catch down uh, the Hellborn heroes. It's only that Bubbles lockdown. Uh, Parasite hasn't really reached that snowball state so far. He got Lex Talionis, but I still think that Hag is going to go for the greedy item, uh, yeah. the Grimoire, or the farming item, maybe I should say. Okay, top lane, or bottom lane more so, because the going to be frozen to open things up, and no chance for him. Lex Talionis on Parasite, we know what that equals. Tons of burst damage. And Cthulhu Fun didn't stand a chance. So Q's it again, 5-0-3 oh, on Parasite. Nine kills in total for the team, 12 and a half minutes in. He's been involved in eight of them, including with five kills. So his farm is fantastic to start here. They're already a level three Lex Talionis on top of it all. Obviously, Glacius is helping as well. 21-1 um, and one record, legendary streak. Wow, let's see, legendary now? Yeah, I guess he has a 5-1-3. So 21-1 and one when Parasite gets a legendary streak, meaning, again, this hero has great snowball, snowball potential, and uh, that's what he's kind of doing here. So Team Who, they, they're setting up to be pretty good. Now, I will say for the momentum they've kind of built here as far as hero kills and stuff, it's not a huge lead. It's an 1,800 gold lead, 2,200 experience lead, so... It's a lead, but again, Wretched Hag is doing solid. And especially if she chooses to get that Grimoire, we'll start exceeding from there. Again, that's going to be a ways off still. But And then Zane, we keep looking back at him. He's been doing very well himself around that 300 gold per minute mark. And he's currently in the middle lane here. Uh, supporting There's cast really... hasn't been doing the best, but... Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, there's not really a fear factor right now for Team Hood, or I mean for Team Reason. They don't have that pull key on Magnus, not even close by. He just picked up those Steam Boots, so he's far away. So, I mean, Team Who can just, like, pretty much pick whatever pace they want from here on. Just play their game, sit back, and await oh, initiation in mid, actually using that Veil Rod very successfully. Yep, and it's going to equal an easy kill on the Shorkan there, playing that War Beast, and now they're going to pressure the middle lane here, so... Yeah, so I guess they have the fear factor a little bit, though, when you um, add Veil Rod to the mix. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> Hag does much better than the carry roll again. Hasn't been played it much in general this season, but uh, or on record lately. But it's a little bit better as far as a five and three goes. One hundred parasite oh, though. Careful, Mill Tower. It is going to be denied, but Bubbles takes the lava stairs to kicks it on top. The Obliterate's doing so much damage. Down goes Bubbles right there. Glacius will barely live. Parasite wants the kill. It gets a kill. Can he get out of there? Sure he can. Hell Cannon takes over. Double tap for Tank Effect, though, but Swift Slashes are going to cut right through him. And he ends up falling in the end. So especially with that Deny Tower, I really think Team Who is overall pretty satisfied with how it ended up. Uh, and uh, Swift Slashes, again, Swift Blade coming in to clean it up. But again, Wretched Hag just busy pushing the top lane in, getting more farm, 350 gold per minute. And he goes the Arcana. Okay, so he is going to be going Hellfrog. to Hellflower, actually. Oh. Hmm, I'm surprised to see that. I would almost go as far to say that Grimoire would be the superior choice. I don't really feel like Hellborn team needs to put too much aggression on, but apparently they feel like they need to. Uh, the Hellflower is going to make him very squishy, and if Parasite plays this correct, he might be able to get some very, very easy kills on the version hack. Yeah. Engineer level 6. Again, energy field ready to go. With that said, Madman, he's going to go clean up his own ancients here. And, you know, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, I, I got to say it was at least five, six minutes ago by now. But Team Who has had these triple stack ancients for a while here. And, you know, we talk about this from wow. time to time. What's up? Really? Yeah, no, no, no. It's oh, just yeah. uh, in, like a, at your uh, comment right there with the ancients. I mean, they still haven't taken them. Yeah, they're still there. <laughs> and uh, Reason's doing their own. And I want to say they've even done a, uh, it before. So Magnus is even coming in. And going to clean this up. So, yeah, lack of uh, capitalizing on resources here from the Legion side. you got to question that. Parasite, he, he's, he wants to find an opening. He's going to get one here. He will open on a Magnus. Will it be enough himself? It will. It really just shows you the burst once again. It's ridiculous. They're going to follow it up. Again, he also has the Battle Cry on top of that. So, it all adds up. The level 4 Battle Cry. 
And they really feels like this parasite pickup with those Lex Talionis. I mean, I think he's gonna rise in the tiers, like how people prioritize him in the drafts. Because parasites, Absolutely. every single time I see it, I mean, they're just doing fantastic work. Yeah, I, I agree. Like within the last month, I wouldn't be surprised if Parasite's record's like much better than it even was before, uh, because that Lex fine. Now Wretched Hag gonna be jump speaking up Parasite right here, assisting and down it goes Wretched Hag. War Beasts, kind of playing a distractor, but nice cutoff from Cthulhu Fun as well. Going to kill off uh, Bubbles right there. They did end up getting Warbies. Parasite, of course, gets away. But uh, they get a couple of kills right in return. So, again, today in general, we're just having tons of action-packed games here. Another 14-9 to nine game here. About 23 kills in total, 17 minutes into the game. So this is going to be a top tower push, though, for recent gaming. And, I mean, the gold's identical at this point all of a sudden. So... I don't know. It just it, it feels like recent gaming is some some way somehow just still making this an even game. Yeah, and they're playing it well now. Uh, kind of like I think they just made kind of this group decision like calm down, guys. I mean we don't have to force anything. Just relax. I mean I know the laning phase wasn't too successful, but you know keep it calm or keep your cool head and just you know let us do our thing more or less. I mean we got experience definitely. So if we just you know bring our game, then we can definitely turn this game around. And so far, I mean they are definitely doing it. Magnus PK is on its way. He got 11 soon as well. That timing is gonna be big. If they can catch Team Who surprise with that timing, they can easily get a genocide happening. Uh, I would say that the leading team still has the late game if it were to come to it. War Beast and Swift Blade definitely outcarries the Wretched Hag and the Madman. But at the same time, I mean, they still have to get to that point where <laughs> yeah. they get six slot that more or less. Exactly. That's you know when we do talk about that on paper, you know, there's a lot of things that need to add up for that. It's not only do they need to be doing well themselves developing into that stage, but then eventually, you know, getting those six items, and that's late in the game. We're 18 and a half minutes in. We're still technically in that early game phase. I think you could say kind of almost starting to transition maybe into the mid game. But Reggie Dagon, now, again, I, I still am a little taken back by her choosing to go the, the Hellflower here. It's just, it, it was so routine to see a carry Wretched Hag, a short lane farming hag, always go Grimmore. There was just no exception, no questions asked. Middle end in the meantime, nice keg stuff. What a keg stuff from near. Oh, the timing was perfect. And he manages to live against Parasite, but meanwhile at the bottom lane, initiation on several heroes. Magnus does stun out. Madman's holding his ground, trying to outlace. They get the counter kill. A big bat blast in from Wretched Hag, but now the Swift Slash is bouncing around. But Swift Blade, he is vulnerable. No spin, no Swift Slashes. He is going down. Wretched Hag with the Sun of Scream. Cannot stay close enough, though. Cut through the fun. Can he get the kill? Yes, he can. He ran back in, actually. He gets the kill. The Glacial Downpour is not enough. And now the chase in the background. Warby's ends up going down as Madman. He buys back and is ready to fight. Cthulhu Font, though, is going to end up falling maybe to the hell. No, the block from Wretched Hag is enough. And Cthulhu Font gets away. Big plays by several different players. And even saying, oh, I thought he was went away at that time. But no, he was still Wretched chasing. Wretched Hag now, though. Onto you, but now Wretched Hag is in some trouble as Parasite comes in. He's like, okay, never mind. I'll just take Madman instead. <laughs> and he takes him out. <laughs> Well, oh, 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 okay. No, he's fine. What a fight, though, at the bottom lane, and, and just more kills left and right adding up. Parasite is 7 0 and 7 now, as well, though. 325 gold per minute here. He's got a Codex now as well. Yeah. On top of that, he's going to deal tons of damage. He actually sold or uh, dismantled his Ghost Marchers for the time being uh, to get it even faster. Oh, oh, Shell Surf just hitting Parasite Creep when he takes it over. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. Minotaur, low HP. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm starting to be a fan of this Shroud build, especially now with the Lex Talionis on the scene. I mean, Pinky Curdy has just, you know, really, you know, uh, revolutionized the Parasite builds in general. I feel like Shroud, I mean, that might be the way to go <laughs> instead of the Codex, because make... you're actually going to get an opportunity, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll see. But again, I, I, I think it, it, if on that argument, we're going a little bit here, but on that argument, it's why not get a portal key, though, if that's the case? That's actually a big jump True. right here. That's a, okay, finally, this is going to stop the streak. So all of a sudden, Hussein dies. That's 474 bonus goal to tank a bet. A big catch right there, again, his first death of the game. But an excellent find for recent gaming. And now they're going to work towards this bottom side of the map and, again, try to control it in essence. But good yeah. find. But, yeah, um, so going back to that. 
the health flower on Wretched Hug kind of paying off right away. I'm sure they would have gotten the kill anyway, but um, still helping out to secure, secure the kill. And now the Hellborn team is playing very offensive. I guess they saw kind of a timing with the portal key and the health flower and the Wretched Hag, just, you know, a chance to actually play defensive. Because the Legion team, that doesn't necessarily have the best mid-game heroes. They got the War Beast, they got the Bubbles. They are, I mean, you know, I mean, they, they are still dependent on the core items. And so far, Bubbles doesn't even have the PK. So as long as they can delay that, Recent gaming is in a very, very good spot. Yeah. God, it's... Yeah, recent gaming, the biggest lead so far of the game, 3,400 gold lead, 2,200 experience, 22 minutes in. It's just, it's definitely turned in their favor. And uh, we, we're seeing that now. Parasite, he comes back up again. He finishes Ghost Marchers once again. So it's going to be level 1 Codex, level 3 Lex Tiony on it. So you know, he's applying pr plenty of burst, but I feel like Warbeast is... I mean, he's 2, 4, and 9, so it's not like he's been struggling here, but he hasn't been finding a whole lot of just farm opportunity in, uh, in this game. He only has 60 oh, creep kills. You compare that across the board to others. I mean, 145 on Swift Blade, 125 on Hag, 100 on Magnus even. So, uh, And, hell, he's even third on his team as Parasite at 63. So, yeah, they, they, they need to find more room, more opportunities for Warbeast here. I agree. They have been very inefficient with those actions that you mentioned before as well. Um, haven't really been stacking them every single time. So, I mean, that's something to work on, or work on definitely if you're Team Ho. Yeah. Got a little bit of interaction there in the middle lane, but nothing, uh, no big deal. Abyssal Skull finished on, on a Zane, of course. Again, that's what he's going for earlier with that regular teacher. Another 1,200 gold saved up on him. Uh, Zane has uh, you know, just, again, just been a solid game for him. We do have a little bit of interaction here, but Parasite just falling back. What looked like could have been a uh, an initiation there, but feel like recent gaming wants to go for Congor. They are kind of hesitating at least. Magnus is around, so it's engineer five man. They could potentially do it. There is a word for Legion team, but it is about to run out. Twenty seconds. Gonna finish out the engines lane. first. I mean, he does have a regen rune, so maybe. Oh, middle lane though, Madman. Yeah, he gets caught. Hellflower onto uh, Shorkon. It looks like. Was it a Hellfire wow. use? No, it wasn't. I thought it was for some reason, but no, they don't even get the kill, though. Mammon makes you escape in the end, even against the kill. Yeah, no there. dust. Oh, yeah, that'll, that, that'll do it. Not having dust. Yeah. Unfortunate there, so... Yeah, now they get an opportunity to take Congor. They know for a fact that Kelfield is down, so is Swift Slashes, and so is the Warbeast Ultimate. So it's a perfect opportunity to go for Congor if they want to. They need Madman, though, to tank it with that Abyssal Skull, but he is on his way. Here we go to Congor, as you're talking about. So the regen rune on Magmus definitely helping. He stuns in, and again, Madman, very, very efficient at killing Congor with that gash ability. So the remake of it, it's been a while now, so pops Berserk and doing some good damage. The Abyssal Skull helping as well. Has Cthulhu, uh, wow, has Cthulhu on tank, and we'll finish it off here. That's that's an illusion, guys. Let's not go too crazy. <laughs> See, Glacius going to try Legion team actually going to look to defend this? I mean, with that, I think that, because they stalled there a little bit, they might actually be able to. Oh, uh, no, Yellow's not here. That's Warby, so. Uh, I don't think they should without the Swift Slashes. Oh, man, even the energy field. You see Eruption coming out as well from Magmus. The quick kill on Eclatius, and they may get more bubbles. He's trying to run away now. You see the spin from oh, Swift Blade on top of the Fawn. Did he steal it? Oh, my God, Parasite got it. Holy crap, I didn't even see him there. They killed the Fawn, and now Engineer's in trouble. Engineer's going to end up falling, most likely. Warby's does join the party as well. But Magnus Hack is here. Hack, big bat blast by Wretched Hack, doing plenty of damage. Parasite may end up falling with the token. It looks like it's very close. Yes, he will go down. But again, yeah, at least he stole the token alive. Will it pay off in the long run? We'll see. Warbeast gets caught, though. Warbeast goes down. Swift play trying to spin in. That wasn't the smartest decision. He's going to end up falling. Jim Carreyu, he wants a second chance. Slow on a Parasite now, and they're just going to kite him down. Can Parasite find a creep? I don't think he's going to be able to make it to one. He's going to try to hold his ground. It's not going to happen, and it ends up being, let's call it a genocide from Reason Gaming as Glacius just resurrected. So... A fantastic steal indeed, but especially with Swift Play going in there at the last second on the uphill, that was just a little too much from Team yeah, 2. Unfortunately. That was the second time as well in this game. He's being a little bit too greedy or a little bit too offensive. I feel like yeah, sometimes you know he should just uh, take the hint and go back and just be happy with what they actually got because that fight went so damn well. But then the Wretched Hag buyback happened and uh, like it, it wasn't really like, I don't think anyone in the team will really call it out but I mean I feel like the second that the, the Wretched Hag bought back I mean everyone should have just shouted you know get back get back yeah. we're not taking this fight anymore but they continue to chase and in, in, like in return they I think they lost three heroes yeah
We saw Zane buy back earlier, and it worked out pretty well. And now we see Wretched Hag buy back. And again, obviously, it worked out pretty damn well. Had a beautiful bat blast. Now, again, no Grimoire, so not a 15% enhanced damage bat blast, but still a, a big one at that. And look at the Veiled Rod here once again from Reason Gaming coming out. Looking for some opportunities and not finding any just yet. May find one soon, though, in Swift Blade. Uh oh, he's running right into a death trap. He doesn't even realize it. Magma Stun's interruption B channel. There's a Hellflower. And that should be a dead Swift Blade. It will be. He's level 16, but he's going to be stalled there for a bit longer. Jim Carrey, you, he's done pretty well so far, but a couple of back to back deaths now is really hurting Team Who. And again, the biggest lead of the game so far in favor of Reason Gaming right here. Losing Engineer was actually picked off at the same time as that Swift Blade went down in the mid. Uh, it's a one for one trade. Obviously, a support for a carry is not optimal, though. And recent gaming are looking really strong. I mean, they definitely had a plan with this Hellflower. I mean, they are playing active. I mean, I was questionable, just like you. I mean, if going Grimoire wouldn't have been the superior choice, but I mean, they really are making this Hellflower work. And it feels like they kind of picked it up just to counter that Swift Blade so that he can't get the spin or the Swift Slashes off. You know, this takes me back. Uh, this uh, this uh, co caster, former co caster of mine uh, by the name of Emperor. Uh, great guy. He also used to be a pro player, of course, on the scene for the longest time. Cthulhu Font just bought him in Sanitarius, and it, it makes me think of that. You know, he was known for going. What? He loved this hero, and he loved to play more of the attack style, combat style uh, Cthulhu Font. <laughs> so uh, I believe, actually, I mean, he did buy it, right? Yeah, he sent it back to base right here. Here it goes. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to deal some good damage here. As he jumps it was those ball. guys in like TTS, right, who loved to do that yeah, kind of stuff. And I yeah. think Emperor was part of that team for quite some for time, bit, or yeah. uh, DVE or, or as well. Uh, and I mean, this ran the Keeper and those kind of heroes as well with Elder Parasite, like to go for the physical armor, transition into the late game. And yeah, I mean, if you see an opportunity for it, go for it. But I don't know, I mean, it makes him tanky. And I mean, in, in a sense, it works like a Helm of the Black Legion. And I mean, it is going to uh, allow him to soak a lot more damage. So yeah, I, I like it. Oh no, Wretched Hag. I was going to say, she. Uh, it looked like reason, or not reason, but Team Who was starting to fall. They were up here. They they figured that she would have fallen back, but she kept going in the next creep wave, and that's where they capitalized. So, again, Parasite in the the start that he had, but Swift Blade. Oh, he tried to swift slashes. I'm pretty sure he does get it off. Will he survive though? He's doing some good damage here to Magmus. The tries to run away. Oh, it's so close. Magmus does. Oh, he misses. The jukes are real, but no, he's cut off by Engineer. Nier's like, you ain't going nowhere. He finishes him off. And another kill on a Swift Blade once again. So, Swift Blade, he's he's grinding it out, but he seems like he's having some struggles here as of late. Keep you have to question his decision to be down there, though. He doesn't have a single ward in their force. Everyone is missing. His team just picked up the Wretched Hag, but there were no support whatsoever for the Wretched Hag. So, I mean, you gotta assume that your uh, or the Hellborn team is somewhere in your force. It's still farming. They're at the bot lane. I think he even used spin to farm offensively. I don't know. It yeah. wasn't cooldown, at least, when they initiated. Did, so, yeah. that was a little bit questionable. Yep, a little bit too much greedy there, and uh, does get picked off. So he's down for another 30 seconds, 1,600 gold saved up. But again, he has a frost burn, the ghost marches, and the energizer. He really is doing solid here at 350 gold per minute, but a couple of three deaths now in the last five minutes or so. It, it is hurting it. Warby's top lane. He ulti forms. I think he's going to be fine. Middle in the meantime, new shrunken head on Madman, and thankful for him that he gets it. And in fact, he's trying to cut off Warbeast, but the ulti form lasting a little too long. And as a result, Shorkan going to be fine. But, yeah, the Shark and Head pick up on Zane. Of course, with all the troubles they've been having, especially with that Parasite, and you got the Glacius, the Bubbles. I think I definitely like that pick up there. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a Brutalizer to follow, though. That seems like it's almost pretty much a go-to now on, on a Mad Men hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went for the portal key now as well on to uh, the Parasite, but they really need to start making things happen. Uh, even though I feel like they could do fine in the late game, going for this kind of Codex build on Parasite, I'm not necessarily a fan of it unless you're playing or planning on playing very offensively in the mid game because it is going to taper off a lot when it comes to the late game. I mean, otherwise a puzzle box or... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, some kind of damage item in general, like a Bulwark or, you know, the Abyssal Skull, for example. Now Warby's got one, but still, I mean, those kind of defensive team items would be much better if you're looking to take this into the late game. Yeah. Nier making another great getaway. I honestly missed the, the initiation right there, but I wouldn't be surprised if he landed another huge keg stun to help <laughs> get away. 
I see just like counting on it nowadays. Yeah, he, he's on point with those. So the energy field was used as well. So that is down for another 80 seconds here, but um, at least it did keep him alive and prevented another kill from happening onto Parasite right there. Bottom lane, we have some possible jump here. Cthulhu the ball level 16, again, the Insanitarius. So he's got some good damage threat coming out. He's joined by Engineer and Magnus, but like we are just talking on, you know, Engineer doesn't have an energy field. And so don't want to necessarily be getting involved in a huge fight here, but they're trying to find some kills while Wretched Ag pushes top lane. She picks up the shot. The Invis head. dog, the Invis Hellhound is going to scout him out. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Well, it's right on top. Bubbles, a perfect Kelfield follow up. There's a song of the sea, the shell serve. Face hug on it, through the fun. It's so slashes even to secure the kill, so they do. Used quite a bit, but it gets the kill, of course. But Zane, in the meantime, he comes in with Wretched Hag. The eruption comes out as well. A lot of magic immunity, though, but not for long. Swiftblade ends up dropping, and now Warbeast. He's going to try to run from this, and he's stunned. They do have it, and he ends up falling on top of it. So three for one exchange. They will take it. No, there was a buyback. That's right. Cthulhu Font did buybacks. Three for two exchange with a Cthulhu Font buyback. So not as big as maybe I expected, but still... A pretty damn big fight for Reason Gaming at the end. Great response on their part. Yeah, they're playing really well, and they're utilizing their buybacks uh, to perfection as well. I mean, knowing for a fact that the Tier 1 tower is there, so, I mean, they ported it in instantly as soon as the initiation happened by Bubbles. And once again, I feel like Team Who is really... I mean, they're a little bit too tense right now. They're a little bit too eager to actually get those kills because they had two very easy ones. They got the Kittolo Fant and got the Engineer, but they always want more, so they continue going, and, in, like, those buybacks, it just... It doesn't work. So, yeah, once again, they're losing the team fight in general. Yeah, Wretched Egg jumping back in and actually getting very low right here. Bubbles is able to finish him off. Maybe Reason Gaming staying in a little bit too long. Zane, the dust comes out. So not going to be so sneaky right here. It does have Engineer coming in. If Engineer can maybe land a big keg stun. Yeah, not going to happen. The freeze happened and Madman ends up falling. And now Engineer, it's about him getting out of here, which he actually will be successful with a nice TP right there. So... Double tap for uh, for Bubbles there. Uh, very, very needed and very good kills by this Legion team. Uh, yeah, just as I'm um, about to talk about how Team Wu is staying a little bit too long, Reason Gaming does the same, so I mean, it definitely goes for both teams. Sometimes when you have momentum, you just want a little bit more. Yeah. Look at that there. Sync is now up in Hero Kills later on, but again, Solar Club putting up a hell of a fight apparently. So, again, keeping updates with that and. I'll, uh, I'll let you know if any result actually happens from it as well. But, oh, top lane, Engineer gets picked off. Again, just too much burst damage to handle. And middle tower goes down. So what was nearly 11,000 gold in experience lead has now dwindled down a little bit here by Team Who. And yeah, look at the bottom lane, by the way. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> Pushing that in, though. And actually going to force him to come back. You see Bubbles, though. He wants to make something happen here. In fact, face like he's going to go all the fun. Trample, though, stalls it, and Magnus barely survives. Will he in the end? He portal keys into the trees. You see he's going to block. Oh, he nice hook him. The eruption being channeled. He goes back in. What a turn right here. Parasite will go down. And Bubble shells us through. But now Glacius is here as well. The rest of the team coming in. And Magnus is going to end up falling. And now Cthulhu fun. He needs to get out of here. And he will with the portal key and the teleport. He even goes into the base. Wow, that's a cute little spot. Yeah. To get away, but he does, so. Good getaway indeed. But yeah, so they, they pressure the bottom tower. I mean, it gets about half-life or so, even, even below half-life it looks like, yeah. The bottom lane there. Yeah, good, good uh, response, definitely, from the Hellborn team. They knew for a fact the Legion team was pushing the mid, so recent gaming are usually very, very good at this counter-pushing. Just never, never letting your opponent get your racks, more or less, without uh, you at least getting something in return. Yeah. 35 minutes in right now. You see another tower kill in favor of the Legion team. Shortcut on Warby. He's getting credit for that one. So he's got the shrunken head on top of the Abyssal Skull right here. Again, Wretched Hag, the Hellflower and the shrunken head. But, I mean, Hellflower, again, it's a solid item, but it's not the flash farmy item like a Grimoire. And he, I really – the Hellflower has come into play. So I, it, it is hard to sit here and say he really should have gone the Grimoire when the Hellflower actually has been pretty useful for him. But I, I feel like as this game now scales later and later, I mean, that's really going to hurt him in the long run. 
and now yeah, uh, it's definitely going to come to a point yeah, where the Sonos Grim is no longer going to be able to uh, farm as fast as a Grim or would. I mean, now it's fine, seeing as he got the mana regeneration and he got that uh, Sonos Grim will easily take stacks and creep waves pushing the lanes. But yeah, it is going to come to a point where you know Grim or would have actually been a little bit better. There goes Congor. But, uh, uh, as long as they keep the uh, aggressive uh, style up, I think it's still it's all right. Congor is dropping pretty fast as expected. Madman with that Berserk up. By the Parasite time running the in. team notices that we, he, he ninja it last time. So, yeah, they're going to get jumped first. Though. Parasite the hook him. He comes right up. Parasite bursts out. They say, you ain't still a no token this time, Parasite. He gets taken out. Slip slashes from Swift Blade. Trunkinette is activated and forces Wretched Act to blink away. She still has her Bat Blast, though. And she could come back in to look to turn things. The Glacial Damport going to be canceled immediately. Magmus Eruption. He's shelling it. I think they saw He goes into Congor instead. He's like, okay, <laughs> might as well use it here. At least a little bit. Buyback, though. Parasite bought back. Oh, gosh. It's not over yet. <laughs> they want it still. It's going to be so close. Hat goes in. She picks it up, I believe. Yeah, she gets it. And again, they're going to do some good damage no, now. No, Parasite. Parasite gets caught. He goes down. And even Magmus is looking for more. Warby's a little bit too far to the right, though, and he should get away. But that was well fought at Congor there by the Hellborn side. And they ultimately earned the Congor kill as well as the token this time. Well played by Reason. At the same time, Team Who, I mean, that's what happens when you're all Legion and you're versus a Hellborn uh, lineup who has the Abyssal Skull. I mean, it is really hard to take those kind of in, uh, engagements. I mean, you need superior vision if you're going to uh, be able to do it. And I mean, in this case, I mean, Reason Gaming, they had full control. They had vision on both sides of the Congor Pit, and they were able to pick up Parasite like easily before anything even happened. So uh, I really feel like if they're going to try to defend those kind of Congor Pits, they need to pick up a Bound or at least get some rewards down before first so that they can actually you know prevent recent gaming from getting this kind of vision kills yeah yeah you can see that right there again parasite uh, i think he started 7 0 and 7 in this game even right now 12 5 and 11 still pretty impressive uh hero stat line and he pointed out uh, too he's never had more than 10 hero kills where it's been in a losing effort and right now though a 10 000 golden experience did once again in favor of recent gaming is not able to do enough. I mean, he has the carry heroes around him to definitely do well, but like we were talking about earlier, just because on paper they scale better, as actually Warby's one of those guys. He gets caught here. Can he get away in that ulti form? I think he may actually. Do they have any more stun? They don't. They shouldn't? Oh my god, they almost oh. caught the kill steal. Jeez. That was close. But he does get away now. It did force him to ulti. Not a big deal, but also it did force a shrunken head, and that's that's a little bit of a bigger deal. Because uh, that's yeah, not cool see. down. Some, uh, I mean, they got a token. I mean, they could take this opportunity. Um, yeah, they are. They are actually going to commit to a Rax push here. T TP on Swift Blade. I feel like he needs to get back as soon as possible. They cannot let this tower go. They need to be back in base already. Yeah, look at Tanka. He's ready. He wants to get something done. He knows for a fact Swift Blade is at the top. Yeah. This is uh, this is your time to fight, if any. So, for CSU Swift Blade, he's not even TPing back just, and he's even cleaning up the jungle a little bit. He has to. Like, if Tanka jumps in like well and actually hits someone with the stun next time, then the Legion team is already going to be losing the team fights. Here he goes. Buyback happens from Morby, so they're going to be good to go and look to fight this. Oh, and now it's just a resurrection. Never mind. Anyways, a jump in. This is going to see in the background. Magnus to counter. Stun, though. Bat Blast hits a couple of heroes. Swift Blade included. And Swift Blade, no, he gets his ulti off. He pressed R just in time. And it's doing some good damage, but he will fall as soon as it comes down. Look at that Berserk from Madman, though. Madman it's barely alive and he's gonna stay alive as he takes out bubbles right there. Wretched Axe still has the token, remember. Counter eruption coming in. Wasn't used that whole time. He uses it as Swift plays, trying to run back in with the buyback, but now he's gonna drop again. And now he's not coming back. Double tap for Buya Kuya, aka Imba Boy. And that could possibly uh, be the Rax here. I think it is gonna definitely be the Rax, in fact. We'll see if it ends up being more, but Team Who, valiant effort, but just too late. Okay, so play did end up coming back in time, but just not enough firepower. No, I know I bought back and he died twice. I would definitely feel a lot of frustration if I were Team Who right now. It's, things are just not going as well as they were hoping to. I mean, they had a very good run in the early game, but in the end, I mean, they weren't really able to capitalize on uh, the Parasite and the Bubbles and Swift Play doing well in the early game. I mean, Swift Play, he's on 355 GPM, and I really feel like sometimes he's been playing a little bit questionable. I feel like, I mean, they need to play it a little bit safer, in a sense, until they get the BKB timings, if they're going to go up versus this Magnus Engineer combo. Yeah. This fight here at the bottom lane, the line stun, uh, the trample stun for Cthulhu is huge. The fact that Swift Blades was able to press that ulti in time was pretty big, but 
still not enough in the long run. So we are seeing some more items that will be picked up here on the Hellborn side now, of course, as far as reacting to that big push they just had. A uh, Whispering Helm here on, on Madman is no doubt uh, the, the big one uh, that stands out. What did the hat get? Uh, sheepstick. Was it a sheepstick? Okay, it's just not on her just yet. So it's coming in for this veil wrath. By the way, it's 30 seconds. You can literally use it in your base and keep running over to yeah. the enemy side. It's a, I feel like it's a little bit too strong, or maybe <laughs> the duration is a little bit too long. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna go all the way to the other team's base. The so team who's really again just kind of forced to sit in their base. Uh, Warbeast is pushing out the top lane a little bit. I mean, I guess three of the heroes are up here, but as soon as they realize what's going on, they they'll need to get back most likely. They'll, uh, they'll fall back here. Ward of Sight's down. And they're gonna oh, get nice sheepstick. He has a sheepstick himself. He's going to stay alive uh, long enough. Never mind. He goes down. No buyback for him. So his sheepstick basically useless. Swift Blade. Time he comes in, he's forced to start running away as he did not want to fight that either. So, Glacius, I don't don't know what you're doing, buddy. Glacius. He's freezing the madman. Yeah, he's, he's taking care of business <laughs> over there. Now, I mean, Warby's is pushing top. I, I get it. I, you really, it's like, what, what is he going to do if he comes back? So might as well just try to counter push as much as possible. But I think this could even be the, the game finishing push here at this point. Very likely. Magnus is ready to go in the background. <clears throat> going to easily take out middle. He gets the top tower, but now he's in trouble, actually. Pops ulti form. It's just Madman is the only one that came back, and I think he is going to get away from him, but... The rest are still in the base. Oh, and they're going to catch Parasite off to the side as well. And they also shoot stick swift, but the, the crowd controls way too much to handle here from the side of Reason Gaming. And that's going to do it. GG, well played. Game one will go to Reason Gaming here over Team Who. So, again, it was a hell of a fight. Team Who had, had, had great potential earlier on in this game, but... As soon as uh, recent game has started clicking, Zane, I gotta say, I mean, he did fantastic early game, and he won his matchup against Bubbles, which you wouldn't think is easy. <laughs> and uh, big props, definitely the MVP. He did everything right in this game. I don't think he did a single mistake, more or less. Not that I can point out, at least. Yeah, and <laughs> that's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, no, he's did fantastic there, so. In the end, he uh, comes through for his team, and recent gaming is victorious. So. It is a best of the three, though. We'll see which team advances on to the next round. As far as uh, Team Who versus Raising Gaming, right now Raising up one game to nothing. So we'll keep you guys an update. Or you know, what, what is an update? Just as before going to break here. Monitor. Uh, sync oh, and the Solar uh, Club. It's over. It, oh, it, it looks is. like it's over. Let me double check. Sync. I'm guessing one. Yeah, Sync did win uh, the first oh. game there against Solar Club. So apparently Solar Club putting up a hell of a fight, but. Yeah, it actually took a rocks. I saw it at the Oh, list. wow. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see what they're able to, or more so monitor what they're able to do in game two as well. But.